What's up, family? Uh, it's your man, Daryl Alder II. I hope you're doing well. I am out and about. Get me a cup of coffee, and I was chilling. And as I was in there chilling in the coffee shop, um, hey, y'all pray for me. I, I think I have a coffee addiction. No, I'm kidding. Um, I felt like the Lord was putting something in my heart, and I wanted to share it. And what I wanted to say is just apologize. Um, that's the message. Just apologize. Um, and what that means in so many different ways, sometimes people, we're afraid to admit when we're wrong because we think it's a sign of weakness. And so we don't ever acknowledge or go back to the person that we may have hurt and make things right. And I'm telling you, go make it right. Go and apologize. They may not want to hear you and that's okay. At least make the attempt to try to say you're sorry, whether it be through a letter, an email, a text, a phone call, or a face-to-face. -face. Go tell a person you're sorry if you know you did them wrong. Don't justify it. Take ownership of your actions and just say you're sorry. You would be surprised how much of an impact that can have on a person's life just from seeing you humble yourself. It can bring a healing to a person. Now, you may not be reconciled with that person after the fact because whatever you may have done may have caused enough damage where they accept your apology, but there's no restoration of, of, of relationship. And sometimes that's a part of life. But nevertheless, just say you're sorry. It goes a very long way and it lets people know that you have enough humility to acknowledge your shortcomings. I think that's one of the biggest things that happens today is that when a person does somebody wrong and they know they're wrong, but they don't want to admit it. I think that's what rubs people wrong a lot is because we all fall short. But when we have a lot of pride and we don't want to admit we're wrong, that just makes a person even more bothered and not wanting to deal with you because it's like, wow, you can't even tell the truth about your actions. You're so full of pride that you don't even want to admit you're wrong. And you don't want to be like that. The Bible says pride goes before a fall. And so if you act like that, at some point in your life, you're going to be on the receiving end of some type of fall. You're going to be and you're going to have to learn. The Bible says we reap what we sow. So if you're out there sowing seeds of discord and stirring up strife, it's going to come back in your life and harvest at some season. So rather than do that, why don't you just humble yourself, take ownership and just say, I'm sorry. You would be surprised and, and you'd be surprised how far that goes. You know what I'm saying? I think sometimes we're afraid to appear weak or we're afraid of the consequences of what may occur if we apologize. Like if I admit I'm wrong, what are the repercussions? Will they trap me, ensnare me, um, pursue me legally because of my ownership of this? I mean, these are valid things that bring fear to our minds. But at the end of the day, I encourage you to go before the Lord and just say, Lord, help me to make this right. And he will. Um, what was I going to? Oh, I wrote something down when I was in the coffee shop. This is what I said. It's a little poem. I said, Christians are afraid to offend. So we never contend in those moments when we're addressing sin. But in our delivery, if we show no chivalry and we hurt others with our words, then come back and apologize. Then observe admitting your mistakes is humility in action and it can open the door to a gospel attraction. When people see God's people acknowledge they're wrong, then they want to come closer to the Lord's throne. So just apologize. This is an act of humility and it can truly be a chance for others to truly see his grace. Sometimes as Christians, the message that leads people to the Lord is when we take ownership over our shortcomings. The Bible says all have fallen short of God's glory. So as Christians, we don't have it all together. We do make mistakes often. It's the grace of God that saves us. And when you're able to take ownership over your shortcomings and say you're sorry, that's a message in and of itself. Some people may not receive it. Some people may want to judge you themselves. That's all right. That's their business. That's between them and the Lord. But if you can go to them and say, hey, listen, from the heart, I truly am sorry. God can work in that situation because you're you're admitting you're admitting what you did. It's like confessing and you're allowing God to come into the situation and resolve it. And so I encourage you today, apologize, because sometimes as believers, we can be overzealous and passionate for the Lord. There's nothing wrong with passion, but sometimes we may um, act in passion and maybe get ahead of ourselves and cause harm. And you don't want to be gun shy and never walk in the passion and the passion of the Lord. Not at all. But you also want to recognize, OK, um, how do I make this right? How do I make amends? How do I exercise discretion? Because sometimes people are so afraid to touch on certain topics because they don't want to hurt people's feelings. And it's not that we're trying to hurt people, but you do have to be honest. But you can be honest and tell the truth with grace. And in doing so, even if a person doesn't like the message you're giving, they're able to recognize the spirit and the heart behind the message. And they're able to say, okay, this person um, is telling me something I don't want to hear, but they're not, they're not dogging me out. They're treating me with dignity like a human being. Because sometimes, because I'm going to tell you, the Bible says it's the truth that will set people free. And sometimes you may talk to a person who is really tormented by some demons in their life. And when you bring the truth of God, that can free them. 
and they may be receptive to that and by you being afraid to tell them the truth because you're afraid of the reaction if god is leading you to tell them tell them because the enemy may rise up in them but that could also be a moment where there is deliverance occurring and freedom occurring so don't deprive them of the opportunity of hearing god's word if god has put it on your heart to share something he'll show you how to say it just make sure that your heart is um is appropriately what am i saying make sure that your heart is right i've had times where god has shown me things to say but my heart wasn't right so it wasn't the time to say it and then when my heart was right i was able to go give a message to someone and it came out in the right way and it glorified god so just make sure that your heart is right check your motives um that's two messages so say you're sorry that's all i want to tell you um if anybody's watching this and you don't have a relationship with god the father the only way to get right with the father is through the son and this is through a confession of faith and a belief in your heart that jesus is lord so if you want a relationship with God, just be after me, Lord Jesus. I believe you died on the cross. I believe God, the father raised you back from the dead. I ask you to come into my heart and make you my Lord and my savior. If you meant that, then now you are a born again Christian. Your name is written in the book of life in heaven. Um, and the next step is to get baptized because the Bible says to be born again of water and of spirit. And the reason why this is important getting into heaven is because there is a heaven and there is a hell. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus when you die, unless he gives you another, another opportunity right in the midst of death, you're headed to hell. And God doesn't want that. So he sent his son to take your punishment on the cross. He died for yours and my sins. And he gives us new life when we come through, to, uh, through him. He said, no one can get to the father except through me. So. I hope you made the right decision today and I wish you well. God bless you. Um, feel free to comment, like, share, subscribe. My YouTube is Daryl Alder the second. My Facebook is Daryl Alder and my Instagram is Craig underscore Alder underscore DC or Daryl Alder the second. God bless you. Peace.